nice, everyone. Men are fertile. 365 and a quarter days. How many days are women fertile for? Roughly seven days in each cycle. Why are we on hormonal contraception? Something for you guys to think about. Today, I want you to walk out of the store having learned three things. The first thing is you've got to actually walk out with this other store knowing one more thing that you didn't know when you walked in. The second thing is you've got to feel something. Shocked, excited to start a new journey. You just have to feel something. And the third thing is that you and your partner can make it an educated and informed decision on the choice of birth control that you guys choose for your relationship. So you guys are at a birth control talk. What makes you, what makes a man attractive enough to get in bed with him? Anyone know? Is it the sexy calves? Is it the butt? Is it the six pack? Any guesses? Does that sound, does, does that feel right? <laughs> it's the smell. Quite right. They're called pheromones. Pheromones. I actually call them pheromones, but my husband keeps correcting me. But they're called pheromones. Now, before I actually tell you what they are, do you know what our divorce rate in South Africa is currently sitting at? 61.2%. That means pretty much all of you on this side of the room are going to get divorced. Maybe some of you, but probably those three might not. That's quite scary, isn't it? And why am I bringing the divorce rate in when I'm talking about pheromones? It's very simple. These things are volatile, odorous substances which are released by one animal and detected by another. Yes, we are animals. Causing some sort of physiological reaction. When you met your partner, it wasn't his butt that caught your eye. It was his smell. But could this divorce rate that we are experiencing in South Africa be linked to hormonal contraception, which is altering our sense of smell, so you are actually choosing the wrong partner from the beginning? Also, this affects you because infertility rates are so high. You genetically know that the smell of your husband, is, you are attracted to him because your compatibility to make the next generation. And is that maybe why our infertility rates are so low? So these reactions can manifest themselves in a variety of different ways. But firstly, with sexual activity. Next thing, with aggression. You get angry with your partner, don't you? Some play a role in territory marking, and others have a similar effect on the target animal, being your partner. So, these are really, really important. And hormonal contraceptive is affecting these. Now, in order for me to talk about birth control, I need to tell you about how a woman's cycle actually works. <coughs> now, I have come across in my years of doing this that women hate their menstruation. <coughs> we as women are taught that it's that time of the month. So how do you view your menstruation? Do you say to your colleagues, I'm experiencing diff technical difficulties <laughs> and everyone just knows what you're talking about? Do you call it the Aunt Flo has returned? Do you say it's the blessing of the curse? Suzanne Rocco has uh, termed that coin, termed that phrase. Or do you say I'm surfing the crimson wave? Or the great flood cometh? <coughs> Time of the month is here. We all know. You can even just say to your partner, he knows what you're talking about. My uterus ninjas are here. <laughs> I have a visitor. Come ride the cotton pony. <laughs> And what many of you women maybe say to your partners, congratulations, you are not a father. 
These are not positive ways to explain the most incredible phenomenon that happens to us on a monthly cycle. So, I'm here to tell you about the importance of menstruation. Because once you understand how important it is to menstruate, you won't hate it anymore. So what are the benefits of menstruation? The first one is that repro women's reproductive hormones play a part in the normal function of every organ system in the body. So every single organ, every single system is affected by the reproductive hormones. It reduces blood pressure during half the normal cycle. Now, have you ever wondered why women under the age of 40 hardly ever have high blood pressure? It's because of menstruation. It reduces stored iron. It reduces the risk of a heart attack and a stroke. Same reason, not many women have a heart attack or stroke unless they're on hormonal birth control. The fourth reason, your period can slow the aging process. I've noticed a hell of a lot of spas advertising aging uh, products. Simply just menstruate, woman. And it's because that iron, losing that iron out of your blood, out of your body, can lengthen your lifespan. Menstruation can offer hints that prevent disease. Did you know the color, the odor, and the texture of your blood gives us very detailed information of what's happening in your body every single month. Getting your period can lead to more satisfaction in the bedroom. Yep, testosterone increases, so when you have sex during your menstruation, it actually feels better. You also feel better because your hormones are released. And menstruation is a natural cleanser. It releases bacteria from the inside of the reproductive system and helps the body discharge excess iron again which can help the low, uh, lower cardiovascular disease. And getting your period can release frustration and anger. So I've got this clip here. And I'm confused now. There is a season. There's a season. There we go. And one of my favorite sort of parts in the song is there's a time to cry and there's a time to dance. Now, one of the things that frustrates me the most about our menstrual cycle is you feel a little low, you go to the doctor, you're depressed. And then actually the way our menstrual cycle works is that there are different phases in our menstrual cycle. Now, okay, this is how our menstrual cycle works. And at different stages, we are going to feel and we're going to experience different things. Now, I'm going to put this very easily, especially for the men. This is a summarized version I like to give the men that come to our my practice. Wherever it's green on that chart, you can have sex without a condom and not fall pregnant. So green means go. If I'm correct, there's quite a lot of green on that, hey? Okay, so I'm going to explain how our menstrual cycle works and how our emotions at different cycles. Now we start off with menstruation, which might start off quite heavy and then go quite light. Now when you're menstruating, you feel vulnerable during those days generally. You might feel you just, anyone can rock the boat and you're, not you're going to burst into tears. Now, after that, we go through a phase that there is no mucus. Now, I'm going to explain mucus, but do you understand? Have you ladies ever gone to the toilet, wiped your vulva, and seen some white, egg white, clear, sticky stuff? Now, I can see some faces going, oh my God. Now, that stuff is awesome. Every woman needs to have mucus. Cervical mucus, if you don't have mucus, you cannot fall pregnant. That is it. Okay, so wherever there's green, there's no mucus. And mucus, actually, the way it works is if I have a beautiful swimming pool, there's a hot summer's day, and I ask you to dive into the swimming pool, you're going to dive in, glide through the water. It's going to be quite an enjoyable experience. Let's take the water out the swimming pool. Who in this room is going to enthusiastically dive into the pool without water. Any takers? Okay, now that's how sperm see your cervix. 
When there's mucus, they dive into a swimming pool. When there's no mucus, they dive into an empty pool. So whenever there is green on this chart, you can have sex without a condom and say, well, I know there's no mucus. Those sperm are diving into that empty pool. I'm good. I don't need to stress. So after menstruation, you go through this dry phase. No mucus. It's pretty boring. You then start producing mucus. And your sexual desire increases. You will also notice that you have the energy to do anything. You can be super uh, woman, super mom, you can meet deadlines, you can party, nothing's going to stop you. And then that builds up to ovulation, which I'll explain just now. And then after that, you kind of need time to rela relax. You're saying to your partner, you know what, can we not go and see those guys this weekend? Let's just stay home. You're battling to wake up in the morning. You can't get to that gym at 5 o'clock in the morning anymore. And you're feeling guilty because you're going, well, I should be. But that's actually the time you need to stop. And exactly like Ilana said earlier, she had so much estrogen, but she didn't know that her body was telling her to actually slow down. And this is your inbuilt system to say, slow down. And then at the end of the cycle, roughly 13 days after that, you have the nesting instincts. Any guys, have you noticed that your partners get like really <laughs> anal about the kitchen? at a certain time of the month and you don't put the plates away and they're gonna, she's going to go crazy. And that's because she now wants to nest. So when you go into your doctor saying, I got depression, he forgets that you're actually quite normal and yes, you're going to feel a bit cranky at certain times of the month and your husband just needs to come home and give you a hug. Okay. Now, the reason why that is all numbered is because your period is never late. It's never, ever, ever, ever late, except if you're pregnant. But when you learn to chart your cycle, you will know when ovulation is. You'll count 12 days, and there we go, there's your period. I gave birth to my baby 13 months later to the day my period, uh, 13 months later, I said to my husband, my period's going to come back on Thursday. Sure as hell, thank you very much, because I charted my cycle. Now, the reason why this phase is not numbered is because if you experience some stress or illness in this phase, your body's going to say, hold on. If you deal with this stress of your body and you travel overseas or you've got a big deadline or you go and run a marathon, your body can't deal with both. It's really clever. It's going to stop ovulation. It can't say to your examiner, sorry, my period's here. Just hold this exam. Uh, the, my ovulation's about to happen. Uh, hold this exam, it will stop the ovulation and then only ovulate when your body's not stressed anymore. That is why your period's late. Because ovulation is late, not your period. So, believe it or not, your body wants a baby. You might not want one. But you woman, I'm sorry, I don't care how career orientated you are. You are here for one reason. Your body wants a baby. And how is it going to do that? Well, there's three ways. First is mucus production, and that's what mucus looks like. Okay, it's a sticky, tacky, white, opaque, clear, anything like that. You will see it when you go to the toilet. Don't worry, you don't have an STI like most of your gynies might think you do. Cervix position. Have you ever noticed at certain times of your cycle, sex feels incredible? That is because the cervix rises and lowers. We need to help those sperm along the uh, path. So your cervix rises, so the journey to the fallopian tube is shorter. So sex feels incredible when you're fertile. And your libido increases. Three mechanisms your body is going to use in order for you to fall pregnant. Because ovulation only occurs within 24 hours and one day in each cycle. Once you've ovulated, you cannot ovulate again. And if that was the mechanism to fall pregnant, it would be really hard to fall pregnant. So ovulation is the actual process of that egg, which is sitting over there, moves out of the ovary and into the fallopian tube. So did you know that strippers who are not on hormonal contraception actually earn more money when they're ovulating. Compared to women who are strippers and who do use hormonal contraception, those women don't get a pay increase during ovulation. Isn't that saying you something about ovulation? 
that you are drawn to men when you ovulate. So, your body wants a baby, but you don't. What are we going to do about that? What are our natural options? The first option is called the Just Dece Method of Fertility Awareness. Now, I am the only qualified practitioner in South Africa in the Just Dece Method. I've studied to a Canadian college to get this qualification, and it was probably harder than any of my degrees. What is the Just Dece Method of Fertility Awareness? It requires you to wake up in the morning and take your temperature with a BBT thermometer, not one bought from Dischem. Okay, it is a special thermometer. Now, who wakes up in the morning? <laughs> Do we all wake up in the morning? Eventually. Eventually, but we wake up. So, the fact that you've got to wake up in the morning, is that pretty hard to do? Okay. Does it matter if you wake up at different time? You've got a window. Okay, so you've got a two... Uh, to our window. So if you wake up at 6, you've got from 5 to 7, okay, um, to take it. You take your temperature, grab your, you wake up, grab your thermometer in your mouth, and you wait for it to beep. Why do you take a th uh, temperature? What we're looking for is the rise in temperature. We want to see where ovulation occurs, because the most important aspect of your whole cycle is ovulation. It's when does the, that egg move out of my fallopian tubes, because after that I can have sex whenever I want, doesn't matter how many times, I won't fall pregnant. Okay, so that's why you're taking your temperature. It's also very nice with taking your temperature, we can see if you've got thyroid problems, we can see if you've got food allergies. Temperature gives us so much more information than just ovulation. And the next part is mucus. Now who goes to the toilet here? Okay. So, so far you've woken up, so far you've gone to the toilet. Sounds pretty easy to me. Okay, so every single time you go to the loo, you're going to wipe your vulva and you're going to see if there's mucus. If there's mucus, it is simple. It is dead simple, this method. You have 75% chance of falling pregnant if you see mucus. Now, 75% at varsity is an A. Who got an A at varsity level for all your courses? Anyone? You can get one in baby making. <laughs> okay, so that's as simple as it is. If you do not see mucus, you have sex, that sperm goes into your cervix, they die within seconds, that is it. There's a bit of a learning process because you've got to find out how to actually observe mucus and what mucus looks like. Now you think, okay, well, this could be quite hard, but did anyone actually um, write a journal, write a diary when you're young? The big and latest thing is blogging. And there's no difference between charting and blogging. Blogging, you actually have to learn how to blog. You have to take the time to sit at your computer and write what you're thinking. And that's exactly like charting. You have to take the time to learn how to do it. You then every evening put in your stamps, put in your codes, put in everything. But at the end of the month, you get this incredible picture that looks like this. It might seem complicated, but when you sit with me, it's very easy. And it's very simple. If you can see over here, those are all your pre-ovulatory temperatures. The day before ovulation, your temperature drops. And you can see those temperatures, one, two, three, ovulation occurred on day one. You can pinpoint the day you ovulate. Then for the rest of your cycle, your temperature will remain high. And then the day your period comes, it drops, your temperature drops. Your period will arrive within 24 hours of that temperature dropping. It is never a guessing game when you're going to menstruate. And all through the month you'll be told, you'll be given signs. The red part, red is menstruation. You actually explain to me what you see when you menstruate. Green, green means go. You can have sex without a condom and not fall pregnant. And I've highlighted all the green parts for you. Violet and purple means no go, unless you want to fall pregnant. Okay, so if you don't want to fall pregnant, you do not have sex on those days. Or you use a condom, but there are risks with your condom. And then your ovulation. And every single cycle, you create this fantastic picture of what is going on in your body. Please feel free to ask any questions. I don't feel like just standing here for the whole time. Um, 
during menstruation as opposed to before pregnancy. So I remember that the <coughs> menstruation was red, not green. Okay. Menstruation is considered fertile for the first three months of charting, and the, very simple, the answer is very simple. When you're young, your cycle generally is around 28, 30, 32 days, and that's a very general term, and I use it very loosely, because you have this green phase over here. But the older we get as we hit perimenopause, which can happen really over a 5, 10 year period, this lady specifically has a 35 day cycle. What will eventually happen is this green phase goes away. So she will go from menstruation straight through to mucus, or mucus is fertile. So what will happen is a woman in perimenopause will go from a 35-day cycle, possibly down to a 24-day cycle. This happens over 5 to 10 years, so you might not even be aware that it's happening. And that's why menstruation is fertile, because if you have sex on a light or very light day, and you are then producing mucus on those light days and you ovulate on day 10, thank you very much, we're pregnant at the age of 45. Okay, that is why it's considered fertile. Also, every single cycle is unique. Every single cycle is different. What do you call people who use the rhythm method of birth control? Anyone know? Okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> the rhythm method is not an effective method of birth control. The rhythm method says every woman has a 28-day cycle. Ladies, do we all have a 28-day cycle? Okay, so what they do is they take a stat, they say do not have sex between day 9 and day 18. Now what happens if you're, let's take a 40-year-old woman, she's in perimenopause, day 9, thank you very much, she's ovulating on day 10, there we go, we're pregnant. Okay, so that is why menstruation is fertile. But if you don't see mucus, it's infertile. If you see mucus, you're fertile. Okay, any other questions? You must shout. What's your temperature like when the surge happens? Is it low or is it high? Everybody's temperature is different. So what you'll see is that it, there'll be a drastic change in that temperature. You'll have 36.4 for the whole pre-ovulatory phase, and then 36.7, you go, wow, I've not seen that, and that's your indication. If you have a slow shift, and that is called a BBT shift there, I know that there's an estrogen problem, I know there's an FSH problem, and that's why I can use these charts to help people fall pregnant because I can get a lot of information from them. Any other questions? Okay. What about these um, apps that you get? The um, apps are... Monitor your... So I find that it's the app that I'm using is pretty accurate to when I ovulate. Okay. The apps are all very well and good. The problem is when they put in the wrong data, it's going to resort to the rhythm method. Um, so that's the biggest problem. It's fine when you have a normal healthy cycle, mm -hmm. but I will guarantee that every woman here, at least once a year, will have a crazy cycle. Where suddenly you have a 24-day cycle and you're going, no, this is weird. Or suddenly having a 38-day cycle. That's where your app lets you down. Can you pick up from this data if, if you are infertile? Yes. I've got, there's actually, in our book, there's three examples. I can show you about 20 examples. I've got examples where uh, gynees will say to their clients, you've got unexplained infertility, and I'm going, you haven't got unexplained, there's your answer. So I can explain exactly why you're not falling pregnant with this method. Okay, so what are the cons and what are the pros of this method? I'm going to look at the cons first. The first bad thing is that you have to use a condom or a barrier method when you're fertile, or you have to abstain if you do not want to fall pregnant. Okay. The second thing, the pros, the pros <coughs> it has no side effects to your body. A bad thing, it takes time to learn. Now, ladies and men, men seem to be quite slightly different here, but when you started to drive, did it take you a bit of time? Did it take you to get confidence? I bet you weren't sitting on that cell phone texting while learning to drive. And please, guys, don't do that even now. But that's the same as this method. It takes a couple of months to learn, gain the confidence, and then trust the uh, method as well. You've got to test it to see that it works. And you test it at the right time, guys, not at the wrong time. Okay. It's easy to learn. Even though it takes time to learn, it's easy to learn. 
Trying to do it over the internet does not also work, guys. I've tried that. It's difficult at first, just like driving a car. It is reliable, 99.6% effective. Please bear in mind there's no other method of birth control that is higher than this. You have to write everything down every single day. It takes a little bit of time, but so does the pill. You've got to actually put it in your mouth. You've got to remember to take it. It's helpful for identifying reproductive problems. So problems that you're experiencing, PMS, guys, PMS is not normal. Your gyn is wrong. You're not supposed to be experiencing it. Heavy bleeding, you're not supposed to experience it. It's natural, it's healthy, and it's organic. It's less expensive than any other method on the market. And it can be used at any reproductive stage. You can use this when you're 14 years old to know when your period is going to come. And you can use this in menopause if you want as well. So those are the cons and the pros. But this method goes so much for, more further. Because firstly, you're going to have more sex. I promise you that. All my husbands come back and say, thank you. Thank you for creating a wife that actually wants sex. It's going to improve your marriage because now you're going to communicate. And one of the biggest things in our marriages these days is we don't communicate. And if your partner says, I'm fertile and I don't want to fall pregnant, you've got to find stuff to do. And you know what? Hanging out at the movies sometimes together doesn't sound too bad, does it? You learn what your body is telling you every single day. And you guys will actually listen. Your period is never late. And both of you... And you also know all your stresses. You can learn what your food intolerances are through charting. And when you are ready to fall pregnant, you don't have to come off hormonal contraception. You don't have to now wonder why you're not falling pregnant. You can use this method to fall pregnant. And at the beginning of my talk, I told you that the divorce rate in South Africa is 61.2%. Couples who use this method are less than five in every 100 couples. That means maybe, just maybe, one of you might get divorced. Isn't that different? Doesn't this say something about a better marriage and a better relationship? So that is the Just Dece method of fertility awareness. Are there any questions? You're very welcome to ask me later. Do you want to? I am based in Melville. I work on a consultation basis. And yeah, pretty much the way it works is I see you for four sessions. The first session is two hours. Who spent their two hours with their last gynae? Anybody? Maybe when you're in labor? In the waiting room. In the waiting room, yeah, two, two hours. So I spend two hours with you in the first session where I teach you the method, where I look at your medical history. I then send you off and generally I see you once, on a, once every month for three months. Sometimes it takes longer because I take you at the pace that you can learn. But generally it's four sessions. You've learned the method. I've taught you it to last your whole reproductive cycle. Okay. And my rates are 2,400 Rand for that package. And when you see the other rates of everything else, you'll see the difference. Okay. So now... We're going to get to the next method, a natural method, the lady comp. Anyone heard of the lady comp? It also goes by Eco Babe. Now, lady comp is a very much glorified BBT thermometer. Okay, very simple, very similar to this little thing that I would give you. It's just got a couple of buttons on it, and it's based on basal body temperature. Now, sperm can survive in your body. How long? Does anyone know? Five days. So you can have sex today, only four pregnant on Saturday. Now, personally, I have a client whose sperm lasted eight days in her. So this little device is solely going to go on temperature. Now, your temperature will be low. You'll have sex, thank you very much. But guess what? There was mucus. So this little device uses the rhythm method to calculate pre-ovulatory temperatures, which for me, I am not confident to use. Also, you are going to rely on a device to tell you if you're fertile or if you're not. Now, the way I ended up in where I am today 
is I realized how bad hormonal contraception was by a very close friend who actually has just started a, a wonderful website all about cancer and one of the reasons we get cancer is a birth control pill. But she told me that she felt the pill caused cancer. She was 35 years old when she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Anyway, after listening to this, I realized that I had to get off the pill. So I went and I searched and I found the Tony Weschler's approach, taking charge of your fertility, which is another approach to fertility awareness. And I bought the app. I got so excited, I was doing this, but I started to rely on a computer to tell me if I'm fertile or if I'm not. And I started to think, is technology that good? And that's when I decided to actually become a practitioner and I learned to con be in control of my body. So I don't like the fact that you're still relying on a device, but it's still there, it works for some people. The cons of this is that this little glorified device costs 6,400 Rand. I'm not gonna lie, this costs 130. Okay. You are not educated about your body, mm -hmm. so you rely on this device. The little green button will say go, the little red button will say don't. It can not tell you when your mother-in-law is staying with you. It cannot tell you when you're traveling and when you are sick. And it uses the cal calendar rhythm method to identify that pre-ovulatory temperatures. But the pros of this is that there's no chemicals and there's no hormones. There are no foreign objects inside of you. It can be used to aid pregnancy when you're ready as well. They say it has a 99.3% effectiveness rate. And again, it can be used at any reproductive age. So it is a great device which is not going to affect your body in that sense. And you can buy it from ladycomp.co.za or ecobabe.co.za. Any questions on that? Okay. The next method is called coitus interruptus, or withdrawal method. Now, this is when a man interrupts sex, the effectiveness rate, 76%. Anyone know what a contact pregnancy is? Contact to pregnancy is when a woman is fertile, she has mucus, a man has, did you know, a man takes three months to manufacture sperm. So the sperm being ejaculated today was actually made three months ago. Now just like the woman's cervix is an acidic nature, so is the penis. So a man's system, the way it works is to clean the penis so that the sperm can travel through and he doesn't kill his own sperm. There's a little gland called the culpa's gland and that gland releases a cleaning fluid otherwise known as precum that cleans the uh, penis and every now and then we have a very determined little sperm. <laughs> and that very little determined sperm, if it comes in contact with your mucus, thank you very much, we're pregnant. So that is why withdrawal method has only an effectiveness rate of 76%. I do not use it as a method of birth control, especially not when you are fertile. Any questions on that? Did I answer all those questions that you had when you were 13 years old? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, that is the natural methods. Let's look at the barrier methods. The barrier methods, the first one I'm going to look at is the copper T. Copper IUD, Paragard is the brand name. Now the copper T is a small little shape, T. It's a plastic. Around the kind of the stem of the T is copper. And the way it works is sperm and copper don't like each other. Very simple. There are no hormones. The only thing is that thing is inserted. And in, inserted is a very placid way of explaining how it is put into you. I've never felt so much pain in my life. There we go. Okay. Um, a lot of women have to go under anesthetic to actually have it put in. Um, do yourself a favor if you are considering it. Go and YouTube it. It will actually show you images of how it's inserted. I actually spent quite a bit of hours watching insertions on the internet. There's a little string at the bottom. It comes down your cervix and it's not visible and your partner cannot feel it. Um, and pretty much this is how it works. 
Okay, um, the pros and the cons of this. The good, real good thing is that, there, again, there's no hormones. Now, the cons I've given a whole page because, well, there's a whole page of cons. Roughly five to 7,000 Rand, depends if your GP or your gynae, if medical aid pays, but that's the general price I get for most of them. Okay. 8 to 12% of users decide to have the ID removed within the first six months due to pain and the period. Some women love it. Others menstruate for six months nonstop. And you don't know what you're going to do until you've had it inserted. The next thing is around 5% of women experience expulsion. Your uterus expels it. It says, I don't want this in my body. And it will do that within the first few weeks. Cramping after the procedure for up to a month. Heavier periods, more periods, and spotting between periods. Pain during sex. Perforation in the uterus. The IUD becomes embedded into uterine wall or migrate somewhere else in your body. You just got to find it. Pelvic inflammatory disease and potential issue issues associated with increased levels of copper in the blood leading to copper excess or copper toxicity. So, if you fa find it works, fantastic. But also some people don't. Uh, I had one, it was so that I couldn't even walk around the block. Mm -hmm. I've never been in so much pain. And I have so many women. And I have so many women who live, that, live like that for years. Mm -hmm. And you go to your guardian, they go, it's all in your head. Couldn't do gym, couldn't even move yes. the dog around the block. It was just pain. Really. Thank you for that, because I have got low protein S, which you probably know. Yes. Yourself means that my blood is prone, is prone to clotting. I'm not allowed on any contraceptives at all. Yes. That's the only one, and I have been thinking, mm -mm. <laughs> It doesn't know? sound and right. My other half is like, People don't, don't tell, and that, that's why I say inserted is a very loose term, yeah. because they always say, oh, it's just inserted. <laughs> so what are the pros of this? If, if it's got no hormones, what are the pros? Well, it can stay in your body for up to 10 years. So if 7,000 Rand over 10 years, 700 Rand a year, you're not going to find a cheaper method of birth control in that sense. It's 99.2% effective, so it is effective. It's suitable for women of all ages. It never suppresses ovulation to work, so you, don't uh, so you avoid all those side effects with hormones. And once you have inserted, as long as you don't experience all those side effects, you should not know that it's even in you. And it's easily reversible. I do say, though, if anyone that knows of anybody who wants to fall pregnant, no gynae should be inserting this into a woman that wants to fall pregnant because it can affect the uterine lining and that can call, be a problem for falling pregnant. Okay. So please just tell your friends. They never, uh, it's you guys who are at a talk like this that are going to actually tell your friends what they might be experiencing. So that is the copper, uh, copper tea. The next thing is what we call the cervical cap, very similar to the diaphragm. Personally, I don't know any gynees who still insert the di diaphragm. Uh, this is like the new version. Cervical cap is a little silicone cap that is like a sailor's hat. You insert it before sex. You can insert it up to six hours prior to having sex. Okay. Um, you can keep it in your bag, so it's always with you in case you need it. Um, one thing you have to do is keep it in your body for at least eight hours because you know there's some slow sperms, uh, they take a bit of time to get up there. And you don't want to take it out of, after sex and then those slow guys suddenly get up there. So that's why you have to leave it out in for six to eight hours after having sex. It can stay in your body for about 48 hours. The problem with the cervical cap is that when you have mucus, when you are fertile, that cap can dislodge quite easily. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they never tell you these things, you see. I do know of a couple of homeopaths who do sell them. They come in three different sizes, like the moon cup, different sizes, before birth, um, if you've had a natural birth, and if you've had a C-section birth. So they are... Don't they say you should be using with that? Because when I was reading up about all of these things, they say you have to use it with sperm. So yes, so I didn't actually care. You can't find these two things in the country like, at all. And I got told, well, you either use a condom or you go on the pill. Sorry. Yeah. KY jelly, you should be able to get. KY jelly is a sperm aside. So yes, 
Um, I actually got told these, these methods are ineffective against STIs. So therefore, they will not tell you about them. Yeah. And, you know, as a person who could die otherwise, yeah. it's like, well, you've got to give me some alternative. That's it. Know? And obviously they want to promote other brands and not the natural methods. There are a couple of homeopaths that sell them. If you ever do want to look at the, uh, the uh, cervical cap, I can pass those details on. It is another option, you know. Even if you decide to have sex on a fertile day, you want to use a barrier. Whether it is a condom, whether it is a cervical cap, or whatever your device is, you can use the spermicide as well. Okay, so the cons. It cannot be used during menstruation. It may be difficult for some women to insert. It may be pushed out by place uh, by penis size, heavy thrusting, or cer uh, certain sexual positions. It must be in place every time a woman has vaginal intercourse. It may need to be replaced slightly after pregnancy. And some women may develop a vaginal irritation. And that's more due to the spermicide than anything. And the cons is that it's 71 to 86% effective. It can be carried in your pocket or your purse. It generally cannot be felt by your partner. It is immediately effective or reversible. No side effects on the woman. And there's no interruption during sex. So it is an option. Um, but again, not necessarily as high effectiveness rate as you would want. So those are the barriers that we've covered. I'm not going to cover um, condoms, most people know about that. I'm not going to cover spermicide or the diaphragm because I just don't know who actually does the diaphragm anymore. Okay, now onto the hormonal contraception. The hormonal cycle affects every organ system in the body. To tamper with and to interrupt our natural rhythms has a physiological cost, some measurable and some known or available if you actually take the time to look. And others that can and will be known only with the passage of time, perhaps when it's too late. This is something you have to understand. Taking hormonal contraception is gonna mess up your hormones. That's why it works. And I love this, youth is wasted on the young. Ask any menopausal woman, she'll go, I wish I didn't mess my hormones up when I was younger. Because that's when I had the libido. That's when I had the energy. And guess what I did? I used hormonal contraception. I never experienced it. So the youth is wasted on the young because when you have it, you don't want it. And when you don't have it, you want it. So when I talk about hormonal contraception, I look at all of this. It's all the same. The pull, the IUD with the hormones, which is known as the Mirena, it's different to the copper IUD. The injection, Depo-Provera. Vaginal ring, known as the Nuva ring. The implanin, and the transdermal patch, the brand name, name Orthovera. They are all the same. There is no difference between any one of those. They are just transmitted differently. When you want hormonal contraception, it doesn't matter what you are on. Over here, we have the woman's normal healthy cycle. We have the spike over here of FSH hormone, LH hormone. We have energy, we have a libido, we want to go, 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 go. And we have the effects of progesterone, which believe it or not, are very important in preventing cancer. If we have an estrogen dominant cycle, that is the first sign that you're going to get cancer later on. Now, a woman who disrupts her system, here we go. Now, I don't know, who's been to the gynae and they say to your gynae says, oh no, taking hormonal contraception is just like being pregnant. Anyone had that? Anyone who heard that? It's nonsense. It's actually like being in menopause. Now, who wants to be in menopause? Okay. So, most healthy women are disrupting their reproductive cycle into a menopausal so late. And that is what you look like every single day day of the year. And you wonder why you have depression. You wonder why you have no energy. You wonder why you just are feeling down. And that's the answer. Now menstrual suppression results in all menstrual suppression. When we take hormonal contraception, we suppress our menstruation. Now we know from the beginning of this talk that when we menstruate, we slow the aging process. It can prevent disease. If you have a better sex life, it releases, it's a natural cleanser and it releases frustration and anger. 
So why on earth do you want to suppress our menstruation? Five facts about menstrual suppression. Number one, birth control pills regulate your period and treat cramps and heavy bleeding. If you have heavy bleeding, if you have cramps, it's a sign that something's going wrong in your body. It just presses the pause button. When you come off that hormonal contraception, guess what? You're going to have it again when you come off. Two, having your period is unnatural and bad for your health. I'm sure you've come up uh, to the paternalistic thinking where uh, many doctors will say women are not supposed to menstruate. Let's just stop it for a couple of years. Well, we know that having a menstruation boosts bone and heart and health. He he uh, heart health. So why would it be bad for us? Having a menstrual cycle is only useful when you need to know when you're pregnant. Now, I know of an incredible woman who is a big mountain biker, who it was her menstruation. She had a very big change in her menstruation. She found out she had cervical cancer straight after that. Imagine if she suppressed that. She would never have known. She's still racing today. She jokes that she's lighter on the bike because all her insides are cut out. But the, she's one of those people that actually lived with cervical cancer. She cleared it and she's still a healthy woman. But it was all because of her menstruation she found that out. After stopping using birth control pill or other hormonal contraceptives, your periods will just return to normal. I have many clients that it takes a good year. I have many clients who are in fertility for one, two, three years, desperately trying to fall pregnant, but they can't because hormonal contraception has stopped that. There's no reason to take a break between packets of birth control. I know many women who are put on birth control from about 14, 15 years old and they're still on it at 30. They've never stopped it. Their body has actually never worked. It doesn't know how to work. Now, if you've been on a hormonal contraception for uh, many, many years, it's going to take many, many years to fix it. Now, I found this on the Association of Reproductive Health Practitioners website. I was shocked. It said menstrual adjustment is also helps to suppress medical conditions that are exacerbated by menstruation and the cyclical variations in female hormones. So it's okay to suppress our menstruation because we just don't know if we're going to get cancer and let's just suppress it. We won't notice and then only, oopsie, we've got cancer 10 years, till, uh, 10 years from now, it's too late. All your signs are given to you on a daily basis. You have the power to be in control and say, hold on, I've got a problem with my menstrual cycle. How am I going to fix it? And that's what happened to me. I came off the pill. I knew my post-ovulatory phase wasn't long enough to fall pregnant. And I knew that I had to fi fix that before I could fall pregnant. Menstrual suppression, are the risks worth it? Osteoporosis, something that they've picked up with the Mirena. Women who have the Mirena in them, within two weeks to a month, can already start developing osteoporosis. Infertility. Heart attack, stroke, and cancer. I have one client who lost her vision because of the Mirena. So we don't actually know the effects. Now, I can give you an A4 piece of paper of the risks, but this is just basically. It eliminates the natural mechanisms that lower blood pressure. These changes are bad for our immune system and our response to stress. Decrease our sexuality, <coughs> sensitivity to pleasure, and decrease libido. Permanent gut flora disruption disrupts hormones, depletion of many vitamins, imbalance of minerals, hair loss, I don't know if anyone's experienced that, depression, and weight gain. Are the risks really worth it? This is a lovely advert I found. Depovera, the injection. Note 1972 was when the FDA approved it. Depovera is the injection every three months. I'll talk about it just now. 2012 cancer research shows that uh, women who used it have an increased risk of breast cancer. It's taken 40 years for them to prove that. How long is it going to start uh, proving what's going on with Mirena? Are you, is it going to be too late until you've got breast cancer? And you just got to look around. And that's my journey. I looked around all the 40-year-olds and I thought, look at how many have breast cancer. Why? Have so many people got breast cancer? So, hormonal contraception. 
There's three, f the first three things, and these are the first aspects, the ones that you on for roughly three weeks, you off for a week. The pull, the transdermal patch, the ring. They all work exactly the same, just a different way. Synthetic estrogen is kept at a constant level just so the FSH level is not high enough so the egg cannot move into the fallopian tube. Okay. There are many different synthetic estrogens. There are so many different pills, I don't even know all of them. They're all given a specific code. Synthetic hormone, progestin. Please don't think progestin has any relationship to the progesterone. Completely different. Okay. This increases the thickness of cervical mucus and impedes development of sperm. The mini pill, often women who are breastfeeding are put on the mini pill and the way that works is it just thickens mucus and that's why many women actually fall pregnant on it. Um, and it changes the lining of the uterus. In addition to these hormones, there are so many other nonsense in that product. What on earth are you taking? What on earth are you putting in your body? And the in inactive pills just have sugar or iron in them. So all those methods are methods that you on for three weeks, you have the patch on for three weeks, you take it off for a week. The vaginal ring, you put it inside you for three weeks, you take it out for a week. Okay. The other side of the hormonal contraception is the permanent option, the injection, Depo-Provera. Long-acting steroid injection. And the problem with this is you go and get it injected for your in you. You got it for three months. You're going to deal with those the side effects whether you like it or not. It's designed to last three months and it's a single dose of 150 milligrams administered into your muscle. Your implantin, this is a little implant they put into your arm over here and it can last three to five years. It's also a synthetic progestin in your body. You can actually feel it in your arm, you can slightly see it. The big thing you should go on to, I love doing this, go on to see the side effects and see all the forums. These things migrate into all kinds of different parts of the body. Okay. And it's a little EVA plant and it's got the hormones. And the third thing is the Mirena. The Mirena is the big new hit on the block. The reality is it's going to be Depovera in 40 years time. Every other second woman I hear has it. And they're very, very excited that they don't menstruate. And when I tell them I'm so excited I menstruate, I love it, they think I'm, I'm cuckoo. But the problem with Mirena is that it is a T-shaped frame, contains a progestin. I can't even say these names, isn't that scary? And it lasts about five years and the hormone is released directly onto the ovary. Okay, I want to say it now. Any gynae that inserts this into a woman that wants to fall pregnant, is doing something illegally. No gynae should be allowed to do it. And you'll see why right now. Now, because after doing this talk for so many times, I've experienced that a lot of people on the marina, a lot of people on the pool, a lot of people are kind of deciding, what, what, why don't I go into the marina? And there's the differences. But the marina works, and this is what I really want to stress. The way it works is progesterone may cause the cervical fluid to thicken so that sperm cannot actually uh, be transported. It is said to affect the way that sperm propels themselves, mainly messing with their tails so that they actually cannot swim. <coughs> it may also cause a woman not to ovulate. And it thins out the lining of the uterus, therefore making implantation unlikely. Now what is scary is that all those four aspects say it may. We actually don't know how it works. So our gynees are very excited to propose this method of birth control, but they don't know how it works. And that's why we don't know how it's going to react to a woman. Some women menstruate on it, some women don't. But what are the long-term effects? And unfortunately, the FDA fast forward all their trials so what is the effects in 20 years? At least with the pill, we know how it works. That's all I can say. At least I know that it prevents ovulation. At least I know that it affects the way sperm travel. And at least I know that it affects the aligning of the uterus. And those are the ways it works. We don't know that with the Mirena. So finally, everything all together. Your natural methods, your computerized monitors, withdrawal method, and the justice method of fertility awareness. 
your barrier, the condom, the cervical cap, the diaphragm, the spermicide, copper tea. And your hormonal, the pull, the patch, the ring, the injection, the implant, the, and the morena. I hope I have covered it all tonight. Any questions, I am here. Even if you want to email me and ask me other fur further questions. That is my talk tonight. So I hope that you have walked away, you have learned something, and you have felt something. And now you can make an, an educated and informed decision. I encourage you to take this information tonight and do your own research. Don't ever trust one doctor. The power is in your hands. Go and research. I have quite a few American clients and as much as they are pain, I love them because they will come with their A4 piece of paper and they will do their research. Too many people, too many women take the advice of a gynae to the detrimental side of their health. Thanks guys. Thank